President of the United States is in his office now and would like to say a few words to you, Rover. That would be an honor. All right, go ahead, Mr. President. This is Houston out. Hello, Neil and Buzz. I'm talking to you by telephone from the Oval Room at the White House. And this certainly has to be the most historic telephone call ever made from the White House. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. And for people all over the world, I am sure that they too join with Americans in recognizing what an immense feat this is. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. Because of what you have done, the heavens have become a part of man's world. Gunter is going to take me up the same elevator used by Armstrong and Aldrin back in 1969. Once we get to the top, I'm going to ask him the big question. So you were probably maybe one of the last two people to see them in the rocket, right? I was the last one, not the last two, the last one, right. Because after I backed out of the hatch, the hatch was closed. I was the last one to see the astronaut in it, okay? I can still, when the hatch was closed, I could look through the center window and see him in there. And they were definitely inside. Well, there's no question about it. I mean, if that doesn't prove, I don't know what he can do. Well, what do you think? Is Gunter telling the truth? Or were the astronauts really hidden in some underground bunker? The last thing anybody wants now is an emergency. But like everything else, they're ready for that too. Once the crew are on board, if it looks as if they're in danger, they get out and head down this tube, specially insulated against fire, and zigzagging down not to some point out and away from the rocket, but to an escape room exactly where you'd think it shouldn't be. Three and a half minutes after they get the warning in the capsule, the crew could be down here in the blast escape room via that 200 foot escape tube, 40 feet below the base of the rocket. They find themselves in a totally rubber room, walls and floors, and they head for safety through a six inch steel door. Once they're behind that door, it doesn't matter what comes down this tube behind them. On this side of that door, the rarely seen blast escape room itself. It's totally isolated from everything around it by a series of 24 giant springs underneath the floor and shells all round it of steel, concrete and sand. It contains enough food, water and air for 20 people for up to 24 hours. And it's all around the edge, there are these foam rubber shock absorbing seats, as you can see. The room is built to withstand the simultaneous explosion of every drop of fuel on a Saturn V. And in that event, strapped into your shock absorbing seat, if your rocket did blow itself to bits 40 feet above your head, all you'd feel would be a mild rumble from somewhere up there. <laughs> 